Hey y'all, Ben Edwards here, head coach at Skyway Cycling. Making this video to kind of go over how the heat affects your performance. Um, this weekend, one of my athletes, Cade, attempted an Everesting and it just got so hot. There was an excessive heat warning and he eventually ended up not being able to complete that Everesting attempt. And I thought, this is perfect because in his power file, there's a clear uh, power to heart rate decoupling that shows like how the heat really affected his performance for that effort. To give a little bit of background on the effort, this is not something Kate or I had been like training or preparing for at all. This is actually a punishment for losing our uh, Tour de France fantasy league. And so we kind of threw it all together kind of last minute, found a decent hill. And I think we could have planned it a little bit better, but overall he put in a really strong effort. And I kind of want to walk through you know, what that effort was and like where it kind of fell apart and what we could have done to, to make it a little bit better for him. So to go through the hill, the hill we decided to do was a segment in the suburbs of Birmingham in an area called Vestavia Hills. The segment is like Renfro Road. The segment's called Renfro uh, to Panorama. It's about four tenths of a mile long with a 223 foot elevation gain. The average gradient on that hill is 10%. But it's a little bit of a fake news climb, and I forgot that it was. I've ridden it a few times myself. But it's a 10% average, but it starts off like right here, like 16 17%, all the way up to 19.4%. And then it kind of tapers off here in the middle down to about 4%, and then kicks up again at 14%, you know, hovering around 10%, then kicks back up to 12 11% before it kind of mellows out again at 5%. And it's a pretty straight downhill. So Caden and I thought it was a pretty good uh, hill to do it on. It might be pretty quick, but I think we misunderstood. I think it was a little bit too steep and it really messed up that effort. Um, and if we had to do it again, I think we would have picked out a more consistent gradient that wasn't so steep. He really had to put out a lot of power just to make it over and just the front section because he's coming into that with no momentum at that U-turn. And I think that's that really messed him up. So we ran this through the Everesting calculator uh, before we started. And it's part of the reason we chose this is because, I mean, that total distance of 105.7 miles is pretty tame for an Everesting. It's about like right where you'd want to be. I think the hill could have had a little bit more elevation gain, been more of a five to six minute effort instead of a four, three to four or like four to five. Um, it was going to be 128 total laps, which is pretty doable. Um, we yeah, have the 10% average rate is not, not accurate there. I don't think, but that's the thing is we ran it through the Everson calculator. It looked good. We kind of predicted maybe a uh, 11 to 12 hour finishing time. And we were just way off. I mean, the power, I mean, the cage power just dipped the second it got too, too hot or too humid. Well, boys, it begins. It's five 30. Here we go. We're going to break the Everesting here into like each little section uh, based off the, the breakup for the distance here. Kate started at like 530 in the morning, which I think was a little too late. I feel like he should have started maybe at 334 to get him a little bit of a better shot or honestly, maybe even do it overnight. The thing is in the South, like we're in Alabama, the, the humidity is like 90, 95 percent. So a lot of the folks out west are like, oh, man, you know, it's, it's way hotter. It's 110, 120 degrees, but it's not humid. So sweating is actually effective. The problem with being in the southeast is that it's so humid that sweating is not effective. So what happens is you sweat into your kit and what's supposed to be like wicking away moisture is just getting saturated. And that sweat's not going anywhere and it's not cooling you off. So your core temperature just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, as opposed to like out West where it's, yeah, maybe it's 105, 110 degrees, but you're able to sweat and cool off and like dumping water on yourself works. The thing is when it gets too hot and too humid here, you just, you can't cool off anymore. You can't, you sweat so much. You cannot keep track. Um, so as you can see, like right here early on, Kate's super consistent. Kate is such a rock star when it comes to, when it comes to these kind of efforts, like, 
he just knows he's so consistent, knows exactly what his zones are and just bangs them out. As you can see, like his power here is bang on the whole time. Heart rate's right there, right in conjunction with it, doing exactly what it needs to do. Like the heart rate zone, I mean, look at that. 164 BPM to 291. I mean, it's right there. He kind of peaks out at like 163, right there in his tempo heart rate. I'm just killing it, super consistent. But as you can see later on, it starts to decouple a little bit. All right, we're uh, 10 laps in, 2,300 feet. Starting to settle in. It's so steep. 22 laps in, taking a little break for five minutes or so, uh, and then get back to it. Sucks. 10% sucks. The next section, so he does the first few laps. I'm gonna change this over to distance. So he does the first two laps. And you can see like he's bang on, um, everything is going really well. And that temperature is, I mean, 73, 75. It's pretty doable. It's humid, but the sun's not out enough to really like heat it up too much. See, so still, I mean, 22 miles in, uh, it's still 75. His heart rate's still right there. And then all of a sudden, it, it jump, the temperature jumps up to 79. And you can see just that little like five degree increase, his heart rates, you know, now it's capping out 165, a little bit higher next to lap 168. And it just keeps going a little bit up 171. Even he's well, he's in the threshold at this point at the same power, 292. I mean, going back later, like 162 BPM, like yeah, 160 at 302 and then bam, like, capping out at like 171 for 260 like that's crazy and it's just getting hotter and hotter like like increasing incredibly like 79 degrees 81 degrees and it keeps getting hotter um and as it's getting hotter you're starting to see that power dip a little bit uh, not crazy yet but that heart rate's starting to get high and he's just starting to get so saturated with sweat that i mean you just can't like the thing is once you start sweating like the water has nowhere to go. This one has nowhere to go. The air is saturated. So you're just sitting in it. It's like a swamp. It's like you're going swimming basically. And your body's like, you know, you can't really adjust to that. Like heat acclimation works, but there's only so much you can really do. Um, and yeah, it just starts. I mean, as it gets later, it's 81. Once it starts to creep over 81, that's where we really start to see um, some of that decoupling. But Kate's still like doing okay. Um, just not quite as well, but he's still keeping a lid on it. I mean, even, you know, we're talking in a couple laps, four or five laps, bam, from 81 to 84 right there. It's just, I mean, you can't really do much with that. So the brakes are coming a little bit more frequent now. Not only are there a bunch of horse flies eating at my legs, uh, it's 80% humidity. So I'm losing a lot of fluids and really just trying to stay on top of it. But it's uh, becoming difficult. All right. Coming into the final portion of this, uh, Cade's nearing the end here. It's getting so hot. It's about 10-ish in the morning. I mean, and at 10 in the morning, it's already 90 degrees. And Cade, I mean, for 230 watts, he's at threshold heart rate, which is, I mean, Cade's so strong. That's nothing. That's his own two ride, maybe. Um and I mean, it's just the same thing. It keeps getting hotter. 95. It keeps getting hotter and hotter. 90, like 97. It caps out at 97. And he's doing like 230 watts and his heart rate's just high. And there's not much you can do. Like the thing is you can't drink enough water for this. You have to really prehydrate. And I mean, it just cuts, it catches up. I mean, there's no, there's no reprieve from this. I mean, we were riding that morning and we cut the ride short because it was so hot. It was actually ended up being like an excessive heat warning, um, which is not like a thing I'd ever seen pop up in my Garmin before. So I knew it was bad. Um, I mean, yeah, 97 degrees. You just, I mean, you just fall apart. You can't, you get dehydrated and you just can't come back from that. We are 33 laps in at the, when I get back to the base of the mountain or the climb, I'll have 33, but uh, that would put me at 97 to go. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, that kind of ends up being it for Cade. He gets up to 42 laps. He does 36 miles with 9,300 feet of elevation gain, which, it, I mean, it was so hot. I it kind of ended his effort right there. Just he once you're dehydrated like that and you can't drink enough to catch back up, you, it's kind of your day is done. And I think we picked a really bad time of year to go for it. But, it, you know, it is what it is. Lessons learned. I think Cade's going to give it another shot. And that, that power to heart rate decoupling there, I mean, the thing is, when it's humid like that, your blood's thicker, so your heart's working harder for the same effort, and that RP just goes crazy high. It's it's unfun. Um, the the summer in the southeast is just so brutal for heat. I think we could have done a little bit more, like get some ice socks going, or you know, have like a cold bucket of water. But I mean, there's there's not much you can do. And I think he gave it a great effort. Uh, Cade's you know one of the strongest people. I mean, he's so good and. I think for him to, you know, come up a little bit short was a sting, but he's strong. He's going to get back. I know. I know he's going to give Everesting another shot. And that's what the heat can do to your performance. Cade's so good and just, you know, the heat just ripped him apart. Um, Yeah, you know, like, subscribe, all of that. I'm trying to build this up, represent the coaching business, represent the team a little bit. You know, trying to to do some fun, different things. Um, Yeah, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Let me know kind of what you do to help manage heat, especially if you're in the southeast because it's so brutal out here.